The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. It is the 6th of June, and uh, we're going to try this puppy again to see if we can get further on three-dimensional space and how to use it to your advantage without blowing up the machine. We have The server is new. It's exciting. It's the cutting edge of technology and it's secure. So um, I'm not going to go into any other discussions. No admin, no nothing. I don't waste any time. I just want to Sounds like a real bad cave now. Thank you, David. I want to just go right into this and see as far, see if we can get it all done. Please, someone keep an eye. I have about an 8.30, 8.40 hard time. Hard floor, okay? So, <clears throat> um, and I also have recovered Mondays. We'll put that up there as well. So in case I uh, look at the first portion in a different manner, um, you can look at Monday's recording. Uh, it'll be up later today, um, which is just right after. I think we we just get to the entry, and then, of course, we go blue screen. So, anyway. Yeah, I don't know where it came from, but once we got the new machine up, it was there. It just happened to be there. I don't know. Thank the IT guy, not me. I just, I just work here. Um, one quick thing. I don't know if anybody has any skills at all in this. <clears throat> and if you don't, don't feel bad. Uh, oh, that's not it. David sent me, let me move this out of the way. If you if you have any art skills or CAD skills, let me show you something really nice. I showed him the other day. Uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's taking a lot more time than I wanted it to. Now let's see if I can grab it. <laughs> Still can't grab it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here we go. Can everybody see the 3D spiral moving through space? Okay, I don't know. I may have to go to an artist to have this done or a CAD designer. Um, I used to have this type of software. I no longer do. Um, what I need is I need these spirals to increase in dimension and or decrease. But if you can imagine simple bars, right? It's like a tornado shape, yeah? So it doesn't sound like anybody has that capability. If you do, drop me a line. Anyway, let, let's move on and see if we can get some work done. Okay, so <clears throat> I was in the hospital. And thinking about the last trade that we made at 316, which was quite profitable, but a little bit, I wasn't sure about the exit. As it turns out, of course, price came right back up, but this seems like poison air up here, um, somewhere above 13 double O. Okay? So I'm contemplating that. I'm actually looking at. Instead of 888, so I'm looking at 1444s. I mean, the Saudi suite at the top of this hospital. They have a room um, that's still there that they allowed me to use. 
they whisked, whisked me up there when I t got to the hospital and um, once I was relatively sane and just on a viral drip and waiting to be waiting for the drip to finish which took a week um, nice job David well let's finish let's finish out June how about that then we'll celebrate I'll drink cocoa I'm drinking raw cocoa now which is pretty interesting and you can have some champagne okay so I'm looking at 1444s in the hospital I get home and switch to 888s which is what I normally trade and uh, I'm just kind of paging through seeing if there's anything worth trading and it's the morning of the 22nd and you can see price come up and leave a shelf and we are above 13 now so we've been now to 1282 we're up at 13 so that's $18 $19 And here's our thought of is this one, two, three drives to the top? Um, or are we going to make significant progress to the upside? Um, I believe on Monday I had something like this through here. Uh, probably prettier, prettier than that. Probably something about like that. As a center line, so let's change. I'll leave, I'll leave it blue. Line of force or center line. Hi, Petra. How are you? And um, I'm sorry, my my uh, my brain's a little fried. Someone mentioned that um, this overshoot looks a little bit like this overshoot. If this is a quality center line, so maybe we should pay attention to that. And you can see we come back down and try and test the shelf, make no progress. And here we are at 1304. Third drive to the top. And take a look at what happens when we get to 1304. Even here, when we get mirror bars. Close near a high, close on the bottom. Make another run up, but we close in the lower half. And then the next bar tries to make a high but fails and closes on its low it seems like there's poison there up there I don't know if it's sellers I don't know if it's that everybody that wants to buy above 13 00 is already long up there and that there are bargain hunters down here but nobody interested up here Does that make sense Gold's a funny old thing. All right, so we retest this shelf. And I grabbed this frequency, and perhaps today, for the first time, You know, over a long period of time. BJ, you've been here since the beginning. A couple of you have been around Breakfast of the Masters since the beginning. Um, you've seen me use... B How's BJ, by the way? Is this Pat or BJ? BJ, you doing okay? How's BJ? Send BJ some love. She needs it. You give her a hug and a kiss. Okay. She was awake last week. I, I don't. I don't think it's going to go away quickly, be, uh, Pat. But, but my heart goes out to her. It's a terrible thing. One day, uh, the three of us will talk about uh, a young girl named Debbie that
passed away in my life at 19 years old. So, anyway, let's leave it at that. Um, perhaps today, those of you who have been around for quite a while, will see why I'm so drawn to these small lines of frequency off of little bits, three, four lines, three, four bars, and where they come from and why they carry through. Not only for entries, I mean, sometimes I don't even use them for entries, but um, they're similar to center lines, and you'll see today, perhaps, how they carry through in many forms and how you can use them in forms that we haven't talked about before. You know, there's this whole pile of stuff that I use, this whole pile of knowledge, and I'm slowly peeling it away. And as I peel it away, I go, ah, yeah, let's just, we should talk about that. Are you most interested at potential nexus points? Well, those are generally where oper uh, opportunities are, David. Um, but I'll, I'm interested anytime price shows me something interesting, but you'd be surprised. I mean, this is not a nexus point. Um, this is just a thought exercise. This line is not even, this is not even a trend line. This is just a thought exercise. I was just, um, vaguely showing one drive, two drives, three drives. It doesn't connect to anything. So. The nexus would probably be up around 308, 309, but as you can see, these drives apparently uh, tend to be working their way lower. Of course, we print 325, game's up. So, I connect the, the, the multiple bottoms here, and for all intents and purposes, I can extend them ahead. I don't know what they're going to mean. I have no idea. Now, when we break below the shelf, I'm willing to call that MLA up here. Uh, and in fact, there. But I really don't know anything else. Second close below the shelf. Now some movement through the shelf. So three closes below the shelf. And notice how we're hugging our frequency line. And right at the frequency line, we leave a low. Close on our high. Yep, frequency line is doing just fine. Don't know what it means, but it's doing just fine. And let's see what happens. All right, starts to climb up. Test the shelf that we left. The advanced multi-pivot line. Now we leave double tops. Same open, same close, same open. These are not alternates. Okay, let's open up because you do want to pay attention to that. Price is... Imagine if you went to Flatland, where we're only in one dimension. Time is in a, a dot at this point. It's just, it stopped. And again, same. Close, open, close, open, close. Okay? We extend the high, but close the same. When this bar prints, and not until, I connect A to this high. Do you see that? This should be our maximum excursion. And yes, I'm going a little bit faster because I want to make sure we finish before people have to leave and before I have to go to the doctor, okay? All right. Why is MLA not at the top? It is at the top. You're not confused. It's right there. But that's where I... This is where I went. Oh, okay. Jose, got it? This is where I went. Okay, it broke through the shelf. So this is probably MLA. We're probably not 
swinging higher, we're probably swinging lower. Okay, Jose? Okay, now, we leave a high. I put in the maximum excursion line. This should contain price on the upside. I don't know what this is. I really don't. When this bar prints and we blow through the shelf, here we close on the shelf. Now we just utterly blow through the shelf and look where we close. We're right on the frequency line again. Note that I marked, okay. MLC is obviously printed. That's going to be right up here. But where's MLB? You've heard me say before, MLC is most important. MLA is next important. MLB is the third. Former low, so right here. So this ends up being MLB. But I had no thought of it being MLB at the time. It's only when MLC formed that I went, uh, wait a second, if this is C and this is A, where's B? Well, okay, now it makes sense. Make sense? Okay, so you don't have to, if you slow down, There are times when you actually don't even go have to go hunting for where's B. Okay, now where's C? You can just say, well, this is clearly C. Well, if I have C, then where the hell is B and A? Okay? That's why I, this is just to remind myself. Let's make this a, okay. Now we have Tim, I get that this C, but B seems very narrow. Yes, it does seem very narrow. I get it, Al. I get it. B was only obvious after C. That's right. And this is extremely narrow. I get it. But let's watch. And believe it or not, we didn't get much past this. When we blew up after two and a half hours on Monday. All right, so look at how narrow this median line is, right? And at first blush, you know that I don't like narrow median lines, right? But remember, one of the things that we've been teaching here religiously is that you can use a median line for an entry and it doesn't have to be the exit. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So what I want to know right now is I have a feeling that this is poison air in, up here. And in fact, it seems to me, think about a big cloud bank of fog. It seems like the cloud bank of fog is lowering even further and it's come down to this area. I don't know how the hell I draw that, but so that the poison air is tipped over the top and kind of filled in this space as well. So it, and we're still above 1300 here. So we were at 1316, then 1308, then 1304, and now we're just above 1300. Do you see that? Is poison air more of a feeling rather than a visual thing we can see? Uh, Ouija. I can see it. Can you see it? I don't know what's up there. It's not, you can't draw a line. So it's not a Dumbo line, but when it gets up there, and this and this area is lowering there just is 
no, there's just nobody that is willing to buy. I don't know that people are dying to sell, but that you know, there's no buyers. Do you see that, Ouija? I have no, I have no better way to explain it. If you can come up with a better way, I'll be glad to consider it. What about excursion line from the bottom pivots, then mirroring it with top? Well, Jose, I don't, you know what? I don't. Again, I, I prefer to get into the meat of this. What you're going to learn is going to dwarf playing around with lines. Okay, we can do that another time. Ouija says, I see big chimneys and Price spends very little time at the top. Yeah, but I don't know why that is, Ouija. And I notice that each time he gets up there, the high is lower. But it's not like you can draw trend lines or median lines or anything. It's just, it's coming down. And it's poison up there. Nobody, Anybody that buys up there doesn't make money. So, this median line looks very, is there what you also mean by some mature market structure? Um, the market structure doesn't even look mature to me. That's why I say it's very irregular. It's just like it probes into that area and falls apart. If you, I'm not going to go back and show you again, but if you look, it's very spiky looking up there. So, there's no... There's not even shoulders. How about that, Ouija? It's just, it runs up and fails, and runs up and fails, and runs up and fails. If you were trading a rolling chop and you were good at it, that would be a, a great opportunity. Yeah, there's no shoulder for opportunity. Yep. All right, so we've got, as El says, we've got a very skinny median line. And what about that? Well, this is the traditional median line, A. B, C. If that makes you a little ooky, let's turn it into a modified shift. Now, the modified shift is the same as the maximum excursion line. So in this case, what I'm actually looking for, let me turn this back into a traditional median line. is I'm looking for the shoulder. This may be written in here, but if it's not, this is certainly the top. I guess we should say that this is the reaction. These are these are Amos's terms, okay? And now I'm looking for somewhere down in here my opportunity, which Amos would say, "Don't sell the top. Wait for a weak reaction, then sell the shoulder." Questions. Keith, does that work for you? I'll be wrong if C gets taken out. Don't sell the top. Amos 101, sir. We don't ever, we're not top pickers. We want to see sellers. Only the labeling of the reaction not being the shoulder. Um... There's no opportunity for me to sell here, Keith. This is the first pullback. I can't use this for a stop. It's too far away. So instead, first pullback. We can reverse these. Okay. 
But what Amos said was don't sell the top, wait for a weak reaction, then sell the shoulder. Okay? Now we need a stop. I've been away a bit, need refreshing. You should be. Hi, what's up? And Jose, no problem. I've been away for a bit too, buddy. <laughs> I don't know which of us has been away longer. So these are Amos's words, um, and as I said, it's a pleasure now to be able to actually, everything has been lifted, I can actually go through my notes and speak freely. Uh, the last person on the signature from Commodities Corporation, Elaine, has retired. And you know, it's not even like anybody would sue me, it's just I'm a gentleman. When I agree to something, I agree to something. And I honor that agreement. So, so if price came charging me up near the top, that would not be a weak reaction. You are correct, Scotty. We, if we take this back out, it's not a reaction at all. And we don't know what we have. And if we took out A, the whole idea is dead. But certainly if C gets taken out, this is not the reaction. There's no shoulder to sell. So this whole thing is predicated on this being... A weak reaction we're looking for an area to sell and this area will not be violated if this area gets violated I have spent a stop and probably my idea is crap everybody with me okay so this is Amos this is not Andrews so I'm looking at the upper parallel I'm looking at the maximum excursion and what else can I throw in there just to muddy up the picture the frequency line sure going backwards so let's throw the frequency line in and say okay now we've got three areas to consider now we can look at the ATR. The ATR is 1.5. I generally use about three bucks in the gold, but the ATR has come down some. So I'm going to use a buck, two, two and a half bucks. And if I'm using two and a half bucks and this thing swings back up, you can see that entering here is the same as entering here is the same as entering here, as long as I can afford to be above C. Right? The key, I'm just going to anchor my go no go above C and see what it leaves me. And what it's going to leave me is all three lines. And then it's just choose your poison. You, you might be aggressive and choose here. You might be less aggressive and choose here. You might be cheap and choose here. Okay? But it's really the same entry. All right, so let's see. So I see it come up to the upper parallel and look at the close. I'm at the upper parallel and I'm at the shelf and look at the close. What's my first thought? Well, sellers, nice separation, heading down. What else though? By the way, this raw cocoa was really good. C is holding. What else? It's not going to come back. Oh, I missed the move. There you go. Crap. That's right. That may have been it. And so now I watch. We close down here. We get another open at the same price, close at the same price. And I am paying that close of attention, and so should you. I connect the bottoms, flip them over to the top, frequency, frequency reflected. And what I want to know is, you can see here that this was a pull down, this was a stop in the action that had some upward bias. Do you see that? This is a pull down. Now we have a stop in the action and we've got a bit of an upward bias. Do you see that? So now I want to measure out 
the bottom and the top and my real question is is the base going to hold and if so will the slope top get broken now notice we got up to the upper parallel and failed and even though we made a new low not low for the move but took out this low we still almost made it to the upper parallel so now I'm not quite so worried Okay, it looks like something is going to happen here. Now, I don't want much or I'm going to get busted. If this top gets taken out, I'm probably going to get busted. But I can slow down a little bit here because we've got a little bit of an impulse move either to the side or even with a little bit of an upside, up, upside basis. Okay, we've come down seven bucks so maybe people are, are are bottom picking a little bit also notice that we went right to our frequency and turned we zoomed the median line touched the upper parallel now we've retested the median line now we're back up so let's see what we get now we're at the upper parallel and frequency and frequency maximum excursion see it so now I say maybe this will make you feel better Keith is this a shoulder is this the area to sell make sense Now, if we take out this top, let's just reflect it out. Not that color, though. <clears throat> I'm probably in trouble. So here's my idea. And look at all the closes. None of the closes are near the top. They're in the middle or... Some of them are in the upper third, but nothing is up here. I want to sell the maximum excursion. Here's my two and a half bucks. O2. Some five cents. This should be just a touch higher. There we go. I'm five cents above C. What can I buy? Well, I can clearly buy the line of maximum excursion. I've waited long enough that I really can't afford this or this. Everybody with me? I've seen all the separation that I need. Take a look at this bar right here. We break through the maximum excursion and look where we close. We're far, far past five pips below. Okay, I don't need any more separation. I don't need any more tests. Waiting that long was more that you're making sure the price doesn't run up that confirmation than a confirmation need. I, I wanted to see what this leg looked like, just like this leg. Now, we talked about, in the beginning, about the three-dimensional spiral. Okay, and if you remember this run up, it was very tight, right? If this spiral on the way down remains that tight, the most I can get is probably a test of the mountain at 1282. And while that sounds nice, that's 16 bucks. I'm really not much of a gold trader for 16 bucks. The risk word's good. I think it's something like six. Somebody did it on Friday, on uh, Monday. But, you know, I'm looking for more than 16 bucks. Otherwise, I'm, not gonna, I'm probably not going to bother with gold. 
but with this much poison there I think we're probably likely to move down and to move down what let's think about it what do I need now it's more than sellers expansion of price I need this whirl so you saw this here I'll do it this is horizontal right with maybe even an upward slope I need this one to be longer each of these I need to be longer do you see that that's gonna make this spiral I wish I could draw it get larger and larger and larger and larger now there is a danger yes that's why it was okay to wait for more bars because I want if it's not gonna flower I don't want to trade there's a danger let's go back to instead of the Newtonian physics let's go back to Einsteinian physics if you will give me that word okay let's go to gravity what do we know about gravity it hurts well it it brings us back from extreme to balance right and extreme to balance is that correct it's a very weak force but in a certain way it's the most powerful force in the universe it can even warp space right it increases as objects get closer however that means actually um, it increases uh, squared as prices get closer right as distance gets closer it increases on a squared basis okay but that also means that as it get further as it gets further away although it does draw things back its influence is decreased by the square root so the further you get out there will come a point where it will no longer be able to pull us back to balance does that make sense so I know we're playing with some physics things that some of you may not be comfortable with that's okay but just think about it this way um, <clears throat> if you're swinging and the rope on the swing breaks you're not going to get pulled back <laughs> you're going to get over the treetops and into the sky and, and, the, and I, yeah, out of orbit yeah there you go all right so what I the danger of these whirls getting bigger swirls let's call it that these swirls getting bigger and bigger and bigger is that at some point they may not snap back so we're on, we're on the think way way back nine months ago a year ago we're on the knife's edge here our expanding worlds the nature of flowering yes and this is our first look at why and in a three-dimensional sense so to be clear are you looking for a wider horizontal movement of this price action on each one of the time as this steps down we're going to see I don't know if it's horizontal or if it's got a slight upward bent we're gonna see these pauses and each one of these pauses should get wider and wider okay and that's the swirl okay but at some point we want to get we want to get off the roller coaster or the merry-go-round can anybody tell me why that is it's not because we need the big drop we're looking for the big drop because it expands so far that it might not come back that's right Scotty okay 
gravity may have lost its influence and it may have broken through and that's when we get that big run back up now sometimes Gina yes you're right sometimes the big drop is vertical remember the prior two big gold trades last April and last uh, May or June that really propelled the the fund those were vertical drops but these are going to be different these are going to actually be market the markets actually going to trade we're just going to see the swirls get larger and larger would you consider drifter coils the same kind of spiral expansion absolutely as long as the drifts or coils expand so I'm going to try and find somebody that's willing to try and draw this. I asked, I actually asked my daughter, and she's her card is full. So I guess I'll have to go to a website. Somebody will draw it. So can the pendulum get too big? Um, I was going to actually show you the, the actual physical physics component of a pendulum, and it's it's too confusing. This will be easier to understand. Um, look at it this way, Lewis. If we go past where the pullback of the pendulum should be, then it no longer has any pull to bring a snap us back, right? Now let's leave it at that simple of a picture. All right, so we are going we are going out to the right. Even though we want to go down, we are going out to the right. I'm willing to sell here if price will let me in. Are you with me? And in fact, this is as going five pips below C, this is as I can only go out to the maximum excursion line. I can't go into the lower parallel because I've waited. Okay? I could easily have just done this here. It would be at, look at it, it would be at the same price. See it? But I'm a little slow. Now, I'm sitting in a gown with my butt hanging out. I'm a little slow. I probably even should be trading, but I'm really fascinated with this poison air up here. All right, so we are filled. And you can see, yeah, that's a visual that you don't really want, I know. How high above C did I go? Five, five ticks. Yeah, too much information on the butt. Thank you, Perry. <laughs> Even for my nurses. Five pips above. I'm always five to seven pips, okay? All right, so now you can see that we made it almost all the way to the top of this channel, if you will. But look at the close. We actually close just one tick below where we got filled. Oh, you've seen Inception, Maceo? I just pl I've just planted a thought in all of your minds that'll take days to get rid of. <clears throat> anyway, so I easily get filled. Weeks, okay. I easily get filled. That's the good news. Now, we close one tick below. And we're still in this sideways motion. That's okay with me. Now, you might want immediate gratification, but remember, once you have some practice and can slow down, once you have some consistent profitability and can slow down and think about what it is it will take for price to give you what you want, you'll begin... I, Enjoy is not maybe the right word, but you'll you'll begin to understand this and be willing to sit through it. The longer sideways equals the expanding world. Yeah, the more this expands, as long as it doesn't take out upside marks, this frequency, this high. When it goes down, it's going to go down further before it hits another one of these 
sideways expansions. Then the next sideways expansion should be even bigger and then the downward movement will happen. And then the next one which should, should be bigger and the down one should be happening. At some point you'll have to decide how and when to get out. Okay? Is everybody with me? Okay. So I think we're about as far as we got. You hate sitting through these. Well, Gina, maybe this will help you understand why they're helpful and what they're for. Okay? And if you enter with the picture in your mind that these whirls or swirls are going to drive you home to the big move, it's not as difficult to sit through them. Okay? So let's see if we can make that happen for you. So we're still going horizontal. We got a little bit of money in it, that's fine. We're still going horizontal and that's fine too. And we're still going horizontal. Let me let me move this one out. So now we're at, we were at the top, now we're at the bottom, but we're still going horizontal. And you can see that this is longer than this horizontal. We are making money, that's good. Now we've got our first close below, but we're only on the switchback of my original frequency. Okay, we touched it, we're still touching it. So, you know, I don't really feel like I'm out of danger yet. I'd like this to now accelerate. Okay, now I've got some acceleration, but I'm at the switchback of the upper parallel. Now, how many of you think I care about this median line and these frequency lines anymore? Jeff says, I do. No, I don't. More the shape of the worlds. Yes. They're still in play? Well, until they're broken or until, see, if I'm correct, and the swirls get larger, there's a chance that the swirls can move around here, but there's also a chance that these swirls can move so far to the right that even the down move will not bring them over here. You follow me? And then we'll have to use different frequency, different three dimensions. Right? No, Gina says, so it must hold a certain form. Gina, in fact, because I expect over here we had a very tight coil, okay? I expect this one to expand. I don't know what form it's going to take yet, right? Is it because you're projecting the median line 3D, so in a sense price is still in the vortex, something like that? Um, let me say it again. I don't know what shape this is going to take as it expands. If it doesn't expand, it's not going to give me what I want. But if it does expand, will it expand around these lines or will it expand to the right? I don't know. It depends on how fast it drops and then expands and then drops and then expands. Okay? I'm just curious how you came up with this analysis and thinking. It's uh, it's physics. It's taking, I, I've talked about this before, we don't have the computing power to do it. It's taking uh, median lines and spinning them through space so that they're three-dimensional objects and then adding uh, another dimension and so they're fourth-dimensional objects and watching price. So that's why you can say you can use median lines to get in. Well, I could use them. I could have used the median line. I could have used the frequency line and I could have used the maximum excursion line, right? I don't know what I'm going to use to go out because I don't know what form these are going to take. So I may have to find my frequency. You've heard me say before when price changes you may have to find a logic to get out does that make sense 
All right, so here's a practical application. Instead of just me just saying that, here's the practical application of why at times we literally don't have anything to lean on, so we're going to have to find a three-dimensional structure. And that's also why we would refresh a median line. Not only a median line, but we're going to refresh our three-dimensional frequency as well, Matt. Okay, we're going to refresh everything here. We're going to have to because we don't know what form this is going to take. So, are you ready to put this into motion? Are there any questions before we put this into motion? Okay. We begin to eat into the frequency lines. We're moving out of our horizontal slope, and now we're getting our sell-off. This is what Gina likes. We're short. We're getting our sell-off now, right? So that's good. But I'm not playing for 12.95. Okay, I'm short at you know 13.00. And I want, you know, 40, 50, 60 bucks. So a straight drop is probably not going to do that. That's not what this market looks like at the moment. Another new low closes in the middle. Now we're underneath the frequency line. Do I have a target in mind? I had something earlier on. I'll go back to it, I Sean. And you might remember from Monday, you might not. I marked this low. Here's my line of frequency. I marked this low, and I said, what if, what if this low to this top was the range? Okay. What's double the range? Okay, double the range is 1262. With me? That'd be pretty nice. That'd be 40 bucks. What's triple the range 1241 that'd be nice huh and what's four times the range that'd be 1220 I'd be more than glad to just take my tent and fold it at that point how about you that's lots of dough so anywhere from 1260 on down. If I can find a three dimensional structure that works for me, I'll be willing to take my tent and fold it. Okay? But I'm not playing for 1282. Not interested. It's like oil. I don't play oil for six bucks. It's too, it, it's too, it, it's just no point. Very seldom do I take a chip shot in oil. 10, 15 bucks in gold is a chip shot to me. Very seldom do I bother because it's too volatile. Normally, I don't have a two and a half dollar go no go. Normally, I have a three, four, five dollar. So I'm playing for significantly more. Okay? All right, so let's get rocking. Let's let it unfold. So you can see it's now expanding to the downside. So this swirl to the outside has led to a downside extension. Are you with me? Now somewhere along here, I'm going to expect another sideways extension or swirl. And Gina, if you think about it in advance, it shouldn't bother you. It, and Matt says, maybe a bigger one. And Gina's got it. I want it to be larger than this. Even though it's going to be, until you get used to it, Gina, it's going to get frustrating. As long as I stay within the bounds of gravity, 
it shouldn't be frustrating because remember the wider the expansion the longer the sell-off and I'm also going to be able to start using these structures to do what else box and profits Gina says these sessions just get better and better well I hope so because I hope three years from now you're still here Gina and making money and happy and saying my god where did you learn all this stuff because I've got I'm just scratching the surface I'm sitting in the hospital going god I, I just I just can't wait to get back and show this stuff <clears throat> all right by the way out of the last whales of my time It's now June, so my buddy, Mr. Shepard, is in South Beach. That means it leaves, yeah, he's done. So that, that means it leaves Richard Dennis and I. Liz Cheval's passed away. The five whales, I'm the only one alive. I'm it. Of Dr. Andrews Inner Circle, there are six of us. I'm the only one under the age of 90 now. Of course, I'm only 56, but so it's uh, feeling a little, I'm feeling a little lonely. I'm feeling like I need to get some books out there too, by the way. <clears throat> so, okay take a look now what well, makes you feel lonely how about that Ms. Uh Gina what do you think I see we come back to the switch back of this upper parallel we're not making any progress at all down here are we now I see one two three bottoms and I'm starting to think, Gina, that are we making a new sideways swirl? That's exactly what I'm starting to think. I'm not, you know what, Gina? I'm not dreading it because when it starts to swirl, I just want it to be bigger than this. So we use this as a measurement. We'll just throw it out there. That's why you don't like the vertical moves so much. You want a cascading flower. It's not that I don't like the vertical moves. It's just that if I'm not driving them, I never know when they're going to run out, right? When they cascade nicely, most people, like Gina, hang on one second, Carlos. Most people like Gina, of course, if they're short, they get terrified of these. They freeze, and they just want out, which is why this happens. How bigger in frequency or bigger in wavelength? Uh, repeat the question for me, Carlos, in a different, different fashion. I missed what I said that got you the I, I want this sorry to be longer is that what you're asking the swirl gets longer or fatter yes yes so you can see that I've now given you given you the next bar Gina so Gina don't get nervous because this is what's going to give us a payday it's okay it's still okay. Gina says, yes, because I did not understand the nature of this kind of consolidation. Right. Have you ever heard of anybody talk about it this way? Yeah. So this is why we're willing to sit through it. Can you see it swirling out there? So how do we know when we were rem removing out of gravity we'll deal with it in a second Gina we'll get there trust me <coughs> do you trust me I've got it all set up for you <coughs> <coughs> we're now at about the same distance as this swirl okay and we're still going 
Now we leave a high and close on our low. Everybody see that? If we're going to box, we need two things. What do we need? A high and a low. We've got this low. We've got this high. We've now lengthened out. We're at, the, we're at our longest swirl. So our swirls are increasing. See them? Are you looking at the height of the swirl channel? Ah, I don't. You know what? I, I could, but not really. Because I'm, I, I mean, I could, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm seeing. You can if you want to, Carlos, but I'm, I'm pretty much, I pretty much have a feeling for what I'm seeing. We're still in the swirl and see it increasing in length, Gina. The longer this gets, the further the drop. Well, the frequency, this is the touchy subject because now in a certain sense, Sharon, we're, we're taking the bottle and the blanket away, okay? Notice that we now have quit playing with upper parallels, original frequency, even the maximum excursion line, haven't we? We're allowing a different degree of freedom here because we're allow we expect this thing to get larger. Let me go to the original picture. If I can find it. One second. Give me just a second. I'm most confused. Okay, there we go. The picture, there we go. Come on. Okay, take a look here. I just don't like blue screens. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you there. I don't know if you guys even saw it last time. All right, so you can see here if we're in a normal pattern. A calla lily slope downwards. Very nice. Yeah. If we're in a normal pattern, we've got frequency, don't we? And this is what we're used to working with, right? Now, if we want to play for the bigger money, we want expansion. And if we get expansion, we can't use this frequency any longer, can we? We're going to have to trust the laws of physics. The pennies drop for you, good. You get that now? So it's, at first, it's going to be a scary trip. But after you see it happen a few times, it's like anything else, you know. You open up the closet, you're scared when you hear the noise, but when you have the flashlight and you look at it in the light of day, so to speak, you realize it was just the coat hanger banging against the back. It, it is a tornadic cone. Actually, somebody asked where I learned about it. Um, when I went to school at the University of Chicago, the man that invented, um, it's still the best tornado lab in, uh, in the world, um, and the man that invented that, and I got lots of hit you know, I would beg him for computer time. So when he wasn't at the lab, and I was, I had an office at the at the at the uh, university or a door at a room where I could sleep. Um, you know, three o'clock in the morning, I would go up and take 15 minutes of computer time, okay? And I could blow open this tornado, kind of turn it upside down, because in we could in this room you could physically create a tornado or a typhoon or a hurricane but then there was also all these wonderful programs that he built that allowed you to play with them okay so once you see 
the cascade lower, then the move out. It becomes a normal way. It's like breathing. It seems like the tipping point uh, there are less buyers as prices to the high and the lower price comes down. The longer the coils, the longer the coils always seem to affect my trading exits. <clears throat> Well, let's, let's see how this one unfolds, Jose, and see if it helps you. Okay? So here, if you're short and you haven't seen this presentation, you're getting a little nervous, aren't you, Gina? Aren't you, Jose? You're thinking, oh, my God, I guess this moves over. What do I do? Well, we already have one clue, and we've been using it, right? Can anybody tell me what that is? We box in profit, sure. Our excursion line's blown. Now, I didn't do this, but I will. The problem is you're going to have to keep refreshing this. So there's your next excursion line. But each one is going to have, see how it, this one expands to this one, which is going to expand to the next one? We can do that. But I'm really not that interested in forecasting where it's going to stop. Instead, I just want to box in. <clears throat> so we found a top. It closes on its low. This next bar closes on its low. Can you see the intent of the market at this point? We are still going to the side, but the intent now has changed from, okay, uh, maybe it's safe to sell here. It's okay with us because, you know, we're already short up here. We don't care. But some other people are starting to get the idea that maybe it's safe to sell at 1295. <clears throat> In fact, it looks darn good to sell at 1295, doesn't it? No, I, would I consider using warning, warning lines? Igshan, I'm not even interested in, at this point, I'm not even interested in, let's call that first order of frequency. <coughs> Ouija asks a prescient question, which is, am I in the two-dimensional world now? I'm about to make the transition for you. into the 3D world entirely. Um, you're in PhD school, not grad school. And soon we're going to be in the, okay, you've got your PhD and now you get to play. You get to investigate anything you want. Okay? That's where we want to go. Basically, I'm, I am using three dimensions. Now I'm about to show you how to use three dimensions. Okay? I'm about to get, I use the two dimensions, and in a certain sense I use three dimensions, but I'm going to just move t entirely to the third dimension now. Okay? All right, so first I got to protect myself. Okay? I've got $700 profit on the table here. My first job and your first job is to protect your capital. Isn't that correct? So let's take care of that first. You can see us. We're still going sideways. Look at the length of this. Now we're testing the bottom of the box. Now we're on the switchback of our original maximum excursion line. It's holding. We're still going sideways, so the swirl is still getting bigger. It's almost twice as big now, Gina. But but you're not worried, right? Okay. It's still going sideways. But we're not worried. We're back up and testing the top. Okay, you can start to get worried a little bit now. 
but look at the close. We're testing the top. Now here's our secondary maximum excursion. Look at it pressing down. This is three dimensions. Come on. Right? So we've got the three dimensions, three dimensional maximum system pressing down, and then we've got the two dimensional extension pressing out. Does everybody see that? I'll make it red. Okay. It's a fight. Why is this three dimension? Because it's sloped. Two dimensions are either horizontal or vertical. Okay. You with me? Wouldn't it be funny if somewhere here the inverse square law applies? It does, Carlos. Watch. Okay, so now one of two things either happens. Gravity asserts itself, and we have to snap back. Or gravity, because of the inverse square, gets broken, and we fly off into space. Okay? I'm betting on the weak force. I'm betting that gravity is going to pull us back. Next time I'll show you curved gravity. Gravity curving space, okay? But I, I don't want to confuse you this time around. So can you see the two dimension is pressing us out? It's like when you're on... Um, one of those things at Disneyland, those saucers or whatever, and they go around and around, and you're pressed against the wall, and you, you want to throw up, <laughs> but you feel like you're going to fly out of them, right? But you don't. Like a centrifuge, yeah. The, but the 3D maximum excursion is pressing us down. All right, so let's see what happens. We're still being pressed out but now let me fix this wish I could type now you can see the 3d maximum excursion pressing us down as we get close to the wire look at the close inside bar at the maximum excursion. Look how long this swirl has become. Is it ever going to go down? Jeannie, you're itching, aren't you? Wide range bar. It's trying to get past 3D maximum excursion. Look at the close. Same close, same open, same close. Where have we seen that signature? and kaboom see it now do we want to move our stop I would suggest to you that you're playing, most of you are playing with a big contract relative to your uh, contract, rather to your 
balance sheet and you should probably be at break even at this point because now you're significantly we're better than three to one right we're four to one okay so break even's fine but have we found the bottom yet We want to find, to make this correct, we need to find a significant bottom and then mark a top and then break that bottom to box in. So I would suggest now, right now, let's write that in. Protect capital, unless you got so much that you don't care and nobody has that much. Unless they're crooks. Protect your capital, break even. Okay? But we're looking for the bottom. Gina, how you feeling? All of this... Now, if you want, when you get this major maximum excursion, if you want, you can go to here. Now, it's not break even. It's about three bucks better. But there's nothing wrong with that, okay? You with me? I have no problem with going here. Because this, this I, I don't like. This, I, um, let me do this. Here, I'd go to break even. Here, and now let's make it green because now we're, we're in the money, right? Have we found the bottom? I don't, you tell me, does this look like a bottom? I think you have this general rule of two new cl low closes to move a profit stop. It's not so much that. It's just much of a... Take a look at these lows. We just kind of tinkled with these. Now we've got extension. Now I'm sure that this does not belong to this structure. When I get this close, I might get a close right back here, the next bar. When I get this close, it's very unlikely that I'm going to close right back up here. Anyone who bought that wide consolidation is now offside. Yep. Can you make that chart smaller? Sure. I'm going to widen it right back out, but I'll go ahead and do it for you right now. So there's our high, there's our shoulder. Here's our first width, here's our second width, and you can see the swirl is three times as large as this swirl. And this is the first time that I'd consider a profit stop. Break even, I like right here, with this type of extension, first time I consider a two-dimensional profit stop. I'm going to teach you three dimensions in a minute. Okay. Today we're going to finally learn how to use three dimensions as tools. Okay. Not just theory. Okay. So I got to swing back out again. So let's find this line and um, that's fine. All right. So this line wasn't a bad idea. Okay. Go ahead and use this maximum excursion, then the next maximum excursion. Now let's see what the next. Now we're looking for a bottom, aren't we? Okay. Now. I want to tell you there's a danger 
this move as a stop is okay because this is clearly a top after a wide range. Do you see it? When this extension comes, not right here, but when this extension comes. But there's a danger if you play in here until you find the bottom. And I want to show you that next. Okay? Because this is where most of you are going to trip when it comes to boxing and profits. Okay? It's not a bad thing. You'll still make money. No, it's only 7.30. I've got another hour, David. But thank you. If the lack of... Ma if the la Line of maximum excursion had been broken in 2D wins. Might that mean the price is horizontal? Uh, I don't. Again, I'm. I, I. I've. I've said this before. Let me just say this again. I'm really not thinking in terms of this. These types of frequencies. Because, I can't predict yet what the swirls are going to look yet, Keith. So this is different than anything you've seen before or a different way of looking at something that we've ever done before okay so don't get don't get caught up so much on if this breaks if this breaks whatever okay what we want to see is we want to see horizontal extension then we want to see flowering then we want to see horizontal extension then we want to see flowering over and over and over okay and then at some point we want to say There's a three-dimensional reason why this is enough for me, okay? And in between there, we're going to learn how to use three dimensions to our good for ourselves. All right, so we have not found a bottom. Double bottoms. We're trading in a narrow range, right? We've moved our stop, so we're on the same bottom. We're testing the bottom. This is where you're in danger of thinking, you know, this is a nice looking bottom, right? Because it is a nice looking bottom. But we've already, in, in a certain sense, we've already used this bottom for this, right? So we don't want to contract and use only a portion of the vertical move. Follow me? I don't want an inside high and then use that inside high. So now we're testing the low. We're making new lows now. So as enticing as that looked, we're still looking for a low, aren't we? So, this is why you need to be patient because, Gina, you know, you paid and sat through all of this, right? So, now we want to reap the benefits of this move down. Could you explain what you just said about inside high? Okay. Okay. This looks like a nice bottom. We've already used this bottom. This line, when we broke out here, I said, let's go to break even. But this extension we used for this profit stop right here. Okay, Keith? So we now, even though this looks like a nice bottom, I'm not going to use, for example, this high with some, and I'm going to go from two and a half bucks to a buck and a half, by the way, which is the ATR. I'm not going to go in here because I've already used this. I need new lows and new highs. I don't use the same structures over and over and over again. Okay? Because if they're going to be contracting, Sorry, using my fingers. If they're going to contract, I just want out. 
and that's that's because we've already used this bottom and it hasn't been broken if we're just going to control let me say it again if we're just going to contract then it's time for me to take my money and walk away right here okay if I think we're I think contracting is what's going to happen I just want my money but we're only at 1292 and remember, I wasn't willing to play for 1282, so I sure as hell am not going to take my money at 1292. How and when do you make that decision? Well, you're going to have to watch and follow this time around. Can I see the next box to the hide? Can I see that the next box to hide a stop will probably be of an equivalent length and not this small box? I hope so, Ouija. I hope that we're going to see a significant move to the right. And I in a lot of ways I expect all the structure over here that we were leaning on originally now it looks like the swirl is going to be to the right the flowering is happening to the right so this is all going to be meaningless right all right so let's move on playing with bottom new bottom Playing with the bottom, coming back up, very small range bar. Okay, now if you thought this significant bottom, here, significant bottom, so we use the, this bottom, and now we've made a new bottom, therefore. We can use this area in here for a stop. How many people are tempted? Because you don't want to give money away. Okay, so I've got quite a few people that are saying I would. And it's structurally wrong. It's tempting, but it's structurally wrong. Now watch what happens. We haven't found a low yet. Watch what happens. I'm going to put in the stop that you guys, there's at least six people here that said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd do it or I'd be tempted, okay? Watch what happens. Okay, there's our, okay, we broke below this low, so now I'm going to put my one and a half stop above this high. Okay? You with me? This doesn't seem crazy, right? Now, watch. We're still finding a new low. This isn't a top. We're still finding a new low. <coughs> so watch what happens if you stay up here. We have to find a low. This is our original maximum excursion. We're on the switchback. Okay? So it's forced. Everybody remember that term? Look at the close. That looks lowish. I like that's a good a good explanation, Gina. Force pivot, and the flowering is getting bigger. Now watch. In a certain sense, Gina, look at us move to the right. We've made some move to the downside, but now we're just moving to the right. We're just jumping off that line like a scalded cat. <laughs> okay. And look at us come up. Now that we found a low, not me, that is Andrews 101. Zoom and retest. It still has not retested that area, and it will. I've seen it time and time again. Okay, BJ, great. So BJ is not tempted. Explain forced again. Forced means that this was a line of frequency, whether it's a upper parallel or a line of maximum excursion, and price turns on a dime on it. That's forced. Now there seems to be some serious buying. Well, we found a bottom. If we found a bottom, what do we need to find next? A top. Sure. All right. So 
670 you guys have this as your stop because you don't want to give this money away right we've been down to 1286 hell you don't want to give away eight bucks right come on admit it you admitted it before step up now watch we're still looking for a top just as we were looking for a bottom when we're still looking for a bottom we cannot set the top we have to find the top you just got stopped out at 1294.5 it's not a terrible thing right it's not a terrible thing But we want to use these sideways motions to propel us to new lows. So a new low means we have to find a high before we can then use the high. Sure, I can tell you again one more time. I'm willing to go to break even. But this is not enough of an excursion to be a low, okay? This, the, the length of this bar tells me that it's very, very unlikely, 80% unlikely that we're going to close back up into here. So I can, I'm willing to put my stop up here. But we haven't found a low. But now we've used this as a low. By putting our profit stop up here, we've used this excursion as a low. Does everybody see that? Okay. We cannot use another profit stop until we identify a new low. Period. Looks like a great low. It gets broken. And when this gets broken down here, you're going to move up here, but we're still looking for new lows. Look, we don't have any new highs. We don't have any new lows. We're still expanding. Our, also, we haven't really had a real pullback yet, only sideways excursion. This is a sideways excursion, exactly right. We need a low, and then we're going to need a high. We're depending on these sideways excursions to then propel us to new lows and then a high and the new lows and then a high. Okay? All right. So this is not a top. This is a forced bottom right here, which is our line of maximum excursion. Okay. Just got stopped out by two ticks. And watch what happens. Now, Gino, look at the size of this sideways movement. Now, that is some sideways movement. By far the biggest yet. Yeah. Look at it. It's one, two, three. It's four times as large. And maybe a wash and a rinse. Sure. And it's the first, it's the biggest pullback. So let's do this, actually, before I forget. Let's do maximum excursion. All right. Let's see what happens. So you got stopped out by two ticks. We're popping back in. So it's not just two swings back. The two swing rule is a framework, but you're looking at much more than that. Two swings back has nothing to do with what we're doing today, Ms. Masio. The angles are starting to get closer to 2D. Well, just watch, Jose. How about that for a bar?
This makes you wonder about gravity. Swung out, got pulled back. But look at it reaffirm this top. You got stopped out right here. Look at it reaffirm this top. It swings out and gravity snaps it right back. Do you see it? The weak force is not much of a weak force. So our maximum excursion, eh, not that helpful this time around. Our two-dimensional high and the gravity associated with this whirl is what's keeping us in check. Okay, now you're sitting through a lot. Look at how wide this outside swirl is. Okay, now watch us come down. There's our high. Let me give you some. I'm going to have to pull in so you can see it's that, it's that big of a move. Here's our bottom. Have we found a bottom yet? Yeah. This was our bottom. And now we identified a top. The top was retested. Now we come down. You could move it on this bar. You could move it on the second bar. It doesn't matter. Here, just to make it less confusing let's move it on the first bar okay now you're locked in now your first feeling as a trader should be oh my god we're at 1285 and my stop is at 1297 that's lots of bucks right okay so you all have been living in the two-dimensional world, right? That's why your stop is now 12 bucks above. Let's see if we can use the three-dimensional world as this next part unfolds and protect ourselves with a better stop. What do you think of that? So we're looking for a new low because we used this low. This low we can't use now, right? This high we can't use now. They've already, they're in play. So now we need a new low, right? We need a low first, then a high, right? Then we're going to break the low, then we're going to use it, right? Make sense? That's the two-dimensional explanation. Now let's see if we can find the three-dimensional explanation as well as the two-dimensional. Okay, so now, remember I talked about filling the mountain. We filled the mountain at 1282. We got 18 bucks in this. So, Gina, that's $1,800 in your pocket, okay? Doesn't work for me. Not in gold. Let's see if we can work this. Still looking for a low. All right, now take a look. Here's our new prior high. See it? Here's our new double bottoms, closing on the high, low. Do you see that? See it? Take a look at this. Now take a look at the three-dimensional orderliness of this. Can you see that? Can you see the new can you see the frequency assert itself?
Okay, so we can now leave our stop up here. We can contemplate a new two-dimensional stop, or we can use frequency, which is three dimensions, to help us get closer to price safely. We're also going to use three dimensions to help us get out before gravity becomes so weak on the inverse that price swirls too far. You with me? That's what we want to do in the next 45 minutes. All right, so let's, I know you don't see it yet. That's okay. And when we finish, you're probably going to be scratching your head at some of the concepts. You can look at the recording and we'll do it again anyway on something else. Okay. We're going to new levels. You mean swirls too far is that we have reached horizontal. Um, yeah, that's one way to look at it. But not in, that's a two-dimensional way, but here's the three-dimensional way, Ouija. Swirls too far as in we've gone so far, we've extended so far to the right that gravity can no longer snap us back. So as we watch the swirls, at some point we're going to say, you know, that next swirl might not come back. So maybe I want to get out of here. Can you explain the new high, please? Which new high? Paul? This high right here? Okay. Look at this high. Can you see that this is two-dimensional? Can you see that it's horizontal? Can you see that this high, we went vertical, and now we're going in a three-dimensional, repeatable structure. Can you see the frequency? Here's the end of vertical. Here's the frequency. This is my 3D center line. Jose? Are you good, Paul? Can you see how we went from vertical to three-dimensional? So you did not mark that high until you saw the frequency. That's correct. I'm looking for the low. As I'm looking for the low, I saw the frequency assert itself. So I moved back up and I said, Okay, this is horizontal, this is three-dimensional, here's the high. With me? Who's got a question? No? Okay, good. All right, so now we've got a box. I don't understand the high. Okay, Jose, one more time. We're going vertical. See it? Do you see that, Jose? I watch until we go and make a new low. We're down here now, okay? Just as before when I was marking C and I didn't know where B was. Do you remember that, Jose? I get down and I leave double bottoms, close on the top, and start to make some progress to the upside. And then I look and I say, okay, this has frequency. There is no frequency here at all. This is just a rounding top and a fall. But all of a sudden, I get a pause, and then I get three-dimensional frequency, sloped frequency, change of character. Gina, thank you. Do you see that, Jose? Or not? Sort of. Well, okay, I'm going to have to live with sort of. This is where that occurs, right here. It's not, well, maybe it's, you're going to have to practice and it's not hard to pick out. Can you see that this is vertical? The high is the high from where the frequency starts as a curious special structural meaning. You mean this point right here, Ouija? Well, watch and see what you think. Okay. Instead of explaining, let me demonstrate. 
Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Here we go. So we've identified a low. I'm positing this as a high. Many of you are scratching your head saying, why isn't the high still up here? Okay. Okay. As we make a significant break below this low, you can have a 2D stop here. If you want, you can have your 2D stop here. And I'm sure this is written here, but let's write it again anyway. This is a 3D, well, let's call it a 3D frequency stop. So you could have a stop at 1289, you could have a stop at 1285 or you could have a stop at 1297. You're going to have to choose your poison. Now let's watch and see what happens. I know I haven't made believers out of you, but let's watch and see what happens, okay? As long as this frequency exerts itself, I can be an ATR above it for a profit stop and I should be safe. We're looking for a new low now. I've used the low here for a 2D box stop or a 3D frequency stop. In fact, actually, there's my box. Let's get rid of Let's get rid of this. Let's call it a frequency stop. Should that ATR above it be sloped? I, don't, I do not understand the question, Matt. Yes, my, well, your stop line is right here. Hang on. On the 3D slope line, what about it? Do you mean does it look like this? 90 degrees to the slope? Uh, no. Because you're still working with two-dimensional bars. If you were working with three-dimensional bars, I would say yes, but you're still working with horizontal bars. So the stop has to be horizontal. Okay? Follow me? Okay, so does the 3D frequency stop keep rolling down? Okay, as long as the frequency relates and holds to structure, it does keep rolling down. So in a certain sense, yes. Okay? Why do you think on the 3D slope line price will not come back and run through it? Well, Al... Let's let's watch and then we'll then then we'll discuss, okay? You're in the two dimensional world, I'm in the three dimensional world, I'm trying to drag you over the line, okay? And I can't necessarily do it without going through the physics of weak force. I can't do it, but let me try and drag you through it and then we'll talk about it. Alright? Is that fair? Okay, I'll even show you an example. All right, we're looking for a new low because we've used this low. Gina, all this sideways movement, Gina, is paying off now, isn't it? Now we're at 12.76. Wrong way. 
now we're expending energy to the downside below the 3D frequency. All right, we start to pull back a little, but no, not at all. Make a low, close on our high. Let's put out a blue line, see what we get. Pull back. What do we need now if we want to move our stop? We need a new high. Nice pullback, right? Is that a high? We'll see. I would posit there's your two dimensional stop. So now you're at 1280. But why not? The heck did it go? Must have moved it. Why not? Let's move it right next to it so you can see it. Our 3D stop. It's not much better, but it's there. Do you see it? Okay, we've used this low so we can't go any further. Now we're making significant lows. Do you see the lows paying off, Gina? Now we're at 12.66. This is double the range. Now we've doubled the range. Remember we said we take money anywhere from double the range on if we can find a three-dimensional reason because at some point as price swings out one of these times gravity is no longer going to be able to hold it in okay because gravity decreases is square root for those of you that want to do the math new low Double bottoms, close on our top. Can you see that all these lows look the same? So that 2x there is less gravity. So that 2x there is less gravity. Which 2x? So at, oh, so at two times there is less gravity. As we get out here, the further out we go, the less gravity there will be to pull us back in to the probable path of price. Okay? And we're not even mapping the probable path of price. Okay? We'll do that exercise another time. That's more difficult. Because it's going to be, actually, it's going to be part of the swirl. So it'll be more difficult. But we'll, we'll map it another time. Testing the bottom. Look like a bottom? Look at how orderly price is going down. Would you draw on a new 3D frequency line? Um, I'm fine with my frequency line. Let's take a look at yours. Um, it would probably be this. You're busted. I want to see price swing back. Okay, I'm fine with my frequency line. I want to see price swing back and see what that gives me. I want to see, it's just like this, Al. I want to use this frequency line until it no longer relates to price. Okay, the moment it no longer relates to price, I'll throw it away. I don't want to just keep curve fitting. One second, Paul. I don't want to just keep curve fitting. 
because when I curve fit, of course, I'm going to get busted earlier and earlier and earlier. The 3D stop is on the frequency line, but could you explain the the what, Paul T? The galooba loop loop <laughs> Oh, okay. Auto-generate to you, too. I get it. All right, so did we find a high? We came up, we left a high, closed on our low. Pulling back. At the low, closes on our high. At the low, moves below. Anybody want to use it? Okay, how do you want to use it? Matt wants to use the 3D. How do you want to use it? Oh, why didn't that work? Well, that's certainly not what I want. Matt wants to do this. How else could you use it? Or how else do you want to use it? Anybody want to play 2D? Well, I'm asking you. You tell me what you want to do. Okay, Ouija says put me in at 2D. I think we did not find a low, so that's not a high to high to stop, says Thomas. Okay? Or says uh, Ouija. Uh, 3D looks good. All right. So this is questionable. Let's put this here just to put it here. But because it's questionable, let's make it gray. And let's see what it means. Okay. What about running the frequency from that high? Isn't this what you mean, Scotty? Oh, the frequency. Uh, we're not going to use a sliding parallel. We're always going to use maximum excursions. Okay. Our frequencies do not relate to each other because they're expanding. Right? Until they expand to the point where gravity doesn't work, they're always going to be expanding. So we don't want an inside sliding or a three-dimensional line. Okay, Yikshan, take care. You, you got the meat of it, and you can finish out the rest on the recording. We're not that far away from the end. Okay? Do you have any rules or concepts of where you place the 3D stop bar from? Easier to figure on the 2D box. Matt, you can run it all the way down. You can just run it down. Blah, 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 blah. You can put a uh, sliding parallel outside and run it down. However, you need to be careful when you get close to structure because as you get to closer, as you get to structure, you want to see whether or not this has now moved out enough that you need a new frequency line. Oh, now hang on, Gina. Gina says, I think, I thought 3D stop would keep us closer to price, but here 2D is closer. Is this a stop, Gina? Yeah, questionable. I'm fine with 3D. I'm not so sure yet about this 2D because I don't know if we found the bottom. What will tell you gravity no longer has influence? Well, this is what we're going to have to watch. Or is this where we st our stops get hit? Possible. And look, there's nothing wrong with getting stopped. Out. Is there anything wrong with getting stopped out at 1271 if you're, stop if you're short at 13 double O? Not the end of the world, is it? This is merely, I just want to show you several ways to use three dimensions in your trading. It doesn't mean you have to, and it doesn't mean you can't go back and forth between 2D and 3D, okay? But 
this is going to be a step out of the 2D world directly into the 3D world. There is hardly much difference between both, only that 3D is working great. Um, just wait, Jose, then there'll be, a, there'll be a great difference in a minute, okay? Well, in a few minutes. Okay, now watch. Still looking for a low. Swinging up, we've got a lower high. Still looking for a low. Still looking for a low. Now, if you want, now you can do a 3D frequency here. Or as we get down here. All right. I wouldn't move too close because, as I said, I want to see as price swings into this frequency, we've got so much sideways movement, I want to see that this frequency is still in tune, right? Because we're in the two-dimensional world, but we're trying to stay in the three-dimensional world. And that is also going to come into play when we take our profits. All right, so... Look at us trying to find a new low, okay? So now I connect. I think this is cockeyed. Let's see. Yeah, sure enough. Well, I connect this low and this low and present it forward. And I'm wondering what the downside looks like on this left hand it's three-dimensional why would I wonder that think keep thinking no idea? Okay. We had all these frequency lines that are all the way to the left, right? New 3D logic. It sounds like a Steely Dan song. Um, we want to know where the force of gravity is pulling us back to. Okay? So, yeah, it is new 3D logic. When we snap back, what are we snapping back to? And then how far are we snapping out? And then back and then out, right? Because at some point, this swing is going to get too far. Are you with me? Because our original frequencies are way in the hell back and to the left. So we don't... We're trying to figure out what's the boundary over here. Because let's think about it. In, the, in a perfect world, do we want to take profits over here? Right here? Or do we want to know where price snaps back to gravity and take profit there? You're talking about at least 10 bucks, right? but we've got to know which one it is. It's kind of what we do when we're looking for price going horizontal. It's very much like it, except now we're in 3D, not 2D, okay? You ready? Questions, are you ready to go? Okay, here we go. You know, as a physicist, this is really fun. Big wide range bar higher. Can you see a swinging out to the, I'm using my hand. Can you see a swinging out to the right? This is what we want, right? Although at some point, it isn't what we want. This should be another swirl, yeah, or a whirl, either one. And 
we're interested in how is price going to react at this frequency or are we going to have to pick up a new frequency okay with me now the reason I don't want to draw inside is because I want this thing to continue to expand and expand and expand until it's in danger of getting past the influence of gravity. So I really want these lines to expand, not contract. You with me? It's against everything you feel. The slope lines, yes. I want them to expand. I want them to do this. Okay. I don't want them in here. I want to let it grow. That's right. Until I think we're at the point where yeah, maybe I'm getting close to overstaying my welcome and gravity's about to get overtaken. Follow me? Let this thing swirl or whirl and expand and get larger and larger until the point where I think, okay, I think I probably have st stayed as long as I need to stay. And that's why I'm starting now to pay attention to the bottom as well, because at some point I am going to want to find a way out that's graceful. I'm already past double, right? My brain is expanding like that right now. Cool. I'm already past double the range, right? So what do you think I'm thinking about? To what extent do you want price to expand until it breaks the 3D frequency line? Oh, that that doesn't bother me. It might, I might be able to go three or four or five more frequency lines. It's until I find... You notice this is the first time I've started to look at frequency on the downside, right? John's got it. I'm going to be paying attention now to the bottom as well because price is going to give me clues for a logical exit before it before it expands too far. It'll show me if I pay attention. I have to look at both sides now. Okay? You with me? All right. So let's look. So look at all the right side growth. And I'm interested in what's happening here. I can put a 3D stop right here. I can't put a 2D stop here, can I? Now let's see if I'm out of my mind. Well, that worked pretty good so far. Okay, Cal, I'll take care. Now, it worked good here, but take a look at 3D, this 3D line. It's, it, it's, it's losing its freak. Can you see that it's no longer as relevant as it was? So do I want to stack another one right here now on 3D? No. Yep, I, I got, no, I've got 15 minutes, okay? So I don't want to stack another 3D right here. Now we're at the prior low, this forced low. See it? Let's see what happens. Holds. 
holds, leave a high, bust through. I'm going to now use a 2D because I don't like my, I don't trust my 3D anymore because of this. And my 2D is about the same as my 3D. You with me? I'm at about 1270. So the worst that happens to me is I'm going to walk away with 30 bucks, which Gina, that's 3,000 bucks. Okay. Now as we swing down. And make a new low. I ah, so we had two and three D stops we can use interchangeably. Three D worked. Now it's no longer relevant, so we're gonna have to switch back to two D. Unless we find three D that makes sense, and we again we don't want one with the smaller slope. We want one with an expanding slope. And if we don't have one, we'll just stay with two D. Okay. Now, as we swing down, remember, double the range was 1266. Anybody remember what triple the range was? 1241, 1242, right in there, okay? I'm going to be paying attention to the downside as well. So now we're flowering to the downside. Look at that one. Look at all that volume in one little bar. Okay, wide range bar closes on its low. You might be tempted to use this three dimensions. Let's put it here just for... Okay, this pivot is a forced pivot, right? We connected two lows, we stopped, forced it out, comes down, touches it, closes in its upper half, put out a blue line because it's a forced pivot. Let's see what happens. I notice, I'll show you what I notice. After our forced pivot, I see three little bottoms. See it? I'm interested in protecting my profits. Now I'm interested in where is balance. Because balance started over here and it's slowly been dragged over here as they move out. called the perturbation as we move out in this orbit it slowly moved out the gravity center so where is the gravity center because at some point we've gone enough to the right that we may break th through and gravity may lose its pull okay so I need to investigate this bottom so I notice these frequencies and remember we started the whole thing with these three these types of frequencies and you've seen these frequencies over and over and over again now maybe you'll get a sense of why they're important and where they come from now that one survived but what if you went down here you see it it's losing its this slope has lost its importance the slope is now something like that I don't know where it's at but it's something like that okay barrier erosion yeah I like that word but I can't I don't see anything pleasing to the eye to tell me where it's at but it's out here somewhere okay it's still increasing and it's going to increase to the point where I'm going to lose gravity to snap me back okay so I'm also investigating the downside 
I'm looking for logical exits. Make sense? <coughs> I mean, even up here, I mean, I faked this line, and this line's blown. So you can see this didn't work. Now we've left a high, closed on our low. Nearing what, Gina? So the first rotation of 3D line was heads up. We are nearing the end. Um, when it erodes, if I can't find a 3D line, it's becoming less and less stable. That makes sense? As it becomes less and less stable, then I'm more and more interested in the downside. Are you going to flip the exit from behind the action to in front of the action? I I don't want to get I don't want to get out up here. I want to get out down here. But I need logic. I need something that tells me that okay ready I need something that tells me that gravity is turning how about that okay so we've left a high we've left a low so we've got a box going we don't have anything three-dimensionally. Now I need to freshen the 3D frequency. Yep, nine minutes, thank you. Or I'm in trouble, right? We're at the low. We bust through the low. Or not. All right, so now let's free, now let's freshen the three D frequency. Here's double tops. When we get this, I like that. You with me? I've got a force pivot off this blue line. I've got some frequency off this brown line and watching both I've got my pink line as my freshened 3d frequency and I've got a blue and a red box looks awfully close to one of your lower 3d frequencies uh, okay hadn't checked it but maybe playing with the bottom again new low we bust through here's our 3D stop and here's our 2D stop I'm sure it's marked on the next yeah there you go so here's our 3D let's call it frequency stop do you see how I freshened up the frequency And here's our box stop. All I did was freshen it. It's not really a sense that I'm trying to tighten things up. I just want it to be relevant. So now I'm watching the upside and the downside carefully. Lower highs. Here's our first drive to this frequency line. You with me? Nice pullback. Here's our second drive to the frequency line. Now we're, we're hunting for a low. I can't do anything. I mean, I could do this. Okay. 
or even this. But now you're talking about 1254 versus 1243, right? Second drive to the bottom and impulse higher. We are looking to exit at a target instead of being stopped. I don't want to be stopped. That's an extra 12 bucks, Gina, right? What was triple the range? Okay, 1241. Where are we? 1241, 1242, where are we? That's where we are. And one drive to the bottom, two drives to the bottom. Nothing has been broken yet. Everything is still pointing down, though the swings are getting smaller. That's what worries me, Matt. The swings are getting smaller. And this was the forced pivot before. Look at gravity now start to swing out. Can you see that? In a certain sense, horizontal, but this is three dimensions, so let's not use that word. Gravity started all the way far to the left at the upper parallel. Now we're at this line, which forced us a pivot. This is the frequency line, and now we can't even make it to the frequency line. So gravity is starting to seep. The momentum of these lines are actually pulling gravity this way. All right, so we're at 3D. Thank you. Out. Now let's see if it's meaningful. You guys have seen me do this before, but now maybe you understand why it's a 3D exit. And it's related to the swirls on the upside. Because as this next swirl happens, I'm afraid that gravity is not going to pull it back. Are you with me? Yes, this is scientific level. All right, now watch. There's your 3D box stop. So that worked. It's fine. There's your 2D box. Now we've broken through, so now you can be at your 3D box and your 2D box. And if you want, you can even play this game. Okay. But on a three-dimensional level, look at gravity. You see it? Gravity is moving this way. We've achieved escape velocity. Thank you. I really didn't want to go there, but yes, we have. Event horizon, Carlos. Okay, now we're at our frequency line. It's holding. Let's put one down just for chuckles. Oh, I had one. There's our 3D box pin. Yep, I'm just about to finish. 3D box, gone. 2D box, gone. Yeah? No matter what you did, 1340, 1242 was it. Now you could be out at 12. There's nothing wrong with getting out of 1250 or 1248, but it's better if you can get a feel for the bottom of 3D the swirls and then the bottom of 3D as it begins to release. Now watch what happens. Can you see that? It, here, let me just... Okay. And here we're out right here. And 
It's got no relation to anything anymore. Do you see it? Do you see three? Do you see three? Gravity just says, okay, I'm done. I got no pull on this anymore. I've been dragged to the point where, if you will, there's a planet hanging all the way over there where our upper parallel was. Gravity got dragged to the point where it no longer has any force. So we monitored the back end and the front end and used 3D on the back end and the front end. Getting stopped out here would have been fine. This is even better. But this was 40 bucks. This was 50 bucks. Any way you look at it, it's a nice trade. Right? So could you say the velocity to the upside would be huge also? Yeah. Look at it. Boom. At this point, I don't know what the anchor is for this. I know it's got a beautiful bottom here. If we go back and look real quick, and then I'll head out of here. I mean, these mountains and valleys were pretty massive. Once gravity gave it up, nice pullback. Once gravity gave it up, nice pullback, right? So this, of course, is our biggest move down. But now you can see it's no longer related to this structure. Can you see the curve? I can't draw it. I wish I could in, in Ensign. Can you see the curve of the structure as gravity slowly gives up? And you don't have to pull in this close to see it. The boxes will show you as the 3D no longer works, as you need to freshen your 3D. You, at that point, should get the feeling that you better be atten paying attention to the backside. Okay? And you can see, once this pivot was forced, we never revisited this again. So we can prepare for a long if we see the bottom forming. Um, I think that's up to you, David. Me, I prefer to take my money now and clear my head. I hadn't thought about it long. I actually haven't. This is about the last time I looked at this. Because, you know, we've been getting the servers up and then evening with the master and stuff. But, um, you know, if you like this, and it looks like it's leaving higher highs and higher lows, start doing your work. Did you use a 3D frequency stop in your actual trade? Yes. Of course. I use it all the time, Ouija. I'm slowly revealing... Because I have to be able to explain it to you guys. I'm slowly going to be showing you more and more and more what I do. The graybeards know this, yes. They laugh at me sometimes. You're shocked that I would teach this to the... Oh, oh wait. Oh, you, you, you're shocked that I would use 3D frequency? I'm a physicist. That's what I do. I know you've never seen it before. You're going to see a lot of stuff you've never seen before. We live in a 3D world, and we're going to start looking at 4D stuff in probably six months or so. Yep. Jose's fainting. No. <laughs> that's space time. That's right. There's all kinds of interesting stuff that we can use that nobody else looks at, which gives us a huge edge. Okay? I know I gave you a lot to think about. I know some of you, including Ouija, are maybe a little skeptical. That's fine. Go back and take a look. Don't go apply this 
to your next trade. Okay, pra exactly. Integrate and practice, but first practice, 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 then think about integrating for sim. I'm very happy you're feeling better. I know words don't amount to much. No, they mean a much. They mean a great deal to me. However, I must say I have a sense of loneliness, and I hope to honor you, your work, and legacy. I treasure and I treasure you. Thank you, thank you, Maceo. Listen, I. It kills me when I'm not here, and when I realize that I was gone from the 12th of May until the 2nd of June, um, it's difficult. This is what I do. So. Anyway, I have felt this before, and now I can see it. Good, Thomas. Well, Gina, I missed all of you as well. So uh, hopefully I will stay healthy, and uh, we got lots to do. And um, let's, what we'll have to do now is consolidate, okay? And for those of you that are lost, we'll do some simple trades as well. Uh, I, I don't know about the afternoon. I'm going to a doctor's appointment at 9 o'clock. Um, and we'll see how long that is. They need to make sure the virus is dead and a couple other things. Um, but I'd like to at least come on and say hello. And uh, don't forget, next Thursday is IB. Okay? So get ready for IB. You've seen a little bit of it, but uh, hopefully you'll see a lot of it. I IB is on... Uh, it's a little bit of what Shane's been, been teaching. We talked about it before I went away, which was um, um, using discipline. Keeping discipline in your trades. Your guesses are nowhere as good as your initial plan. Period. How do I get to CIB? Um, you should, Jose, you should get a invitation. Go to the front page of Market Geometry and sign up for the uh, newsletter. There's a sign-up page or somewhere. If if not, drop me an, uh, an email if you can't find it, and I'll uh, I'll clue you in. But the other way to get it is just go to Interactive Brokers and and search for Timothy Morge, and you'll find me, and you'll see the invitation to the newest one. But even if you miss it, it is always recorded, and you always get the slides. Okay. Don't worry about it. It's next Thursday at noon New York time. Whatever the hell that means. So anyway, um, I hope you guys found you guys find this interesting. I hope it was worth waiting for after Monday's crash. BJ, if you're still here, or Pat, if you're still here, give BJ a hug and a kiss for me. And uh, maybe I'll see you guys at midnight. If, if not, I will see you Monday morning. Don't try this in your trading right now, okay? Let's integrate it first. Okay? Let's make sure it makes sense. Have a great weekend. I love all of it, and I take care.